the hell is happening? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 30th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 185th episode overall, titled Oily to Bed, Oily to Rise. We begin this episode at the Angel Grove Catch a Wave competition, and some guy from Stone Canyon is doing his run. Then Rocky is there with Tommy and Kat, and it turns out Kat is competing. They talk about how they don't really know much about the Gold Ranger, and Tommy's brother David comes up immediately afterward. I mean, we get it guys. Mondo and Sprocket then plan to make the entire world's supply of water into machine sludge. We're introduced to our new monster, the Leaky Faucet, who we definitely saw in the invasion of the Ranger Snatchers, but like, whatever, I like this guy. Kat goes out to compete surfing, and Tommy and David are cheering her on as she goes. Meanwhile, Clank is showing Leaky Faucet a diagram of Angel Grove's water pipes, and Leaky Faucet goes into them to mess up everything. At the detective agency, Stone has gotten something from his Java of the Month Club. It's a rare Jamaican bean, and he's going to teach them how to make a good cup of coffee with a textbook that he wrote himself. Then, long story short, Bulk and Skull are struggling to make coffee, and Skull fills up a glass with water and it's apparently yellow for some reason. They then just add the beans, thinking that's how you make coffee, I guess. Meanwhile, Tanya and Adam are sparring together. They finish and they say that they better get going because they have a lot of stuff to do, and they go to Ernie, asking for two waters, and Ernie pours it out, and yeah, it's gross sludge. Same thing with his sink. Ernie assumes something's wrong with the pipes. Adam smells it, and he says he knows that smell, and Tanya smells it, saying it smells like cog oil. That makes sense that they'd actually know these things and their scent. Meanwhile, Kat's about to take the lead at her competition. Also at the power chamber, Billy verifies that it is indeed cog oil and they need to make sure no one touches or drinks it. Then the alarms start going off and they see that cogs are on the beach getting ready to release some oil into the ocean. It's morphin' time. Green and yellow show up trying to fight off the cogs, but they're not doing very well. And Tanya just gets straight up tossed out of the way. Then the cogs actually get the lid off and man, this effect is absolutely terrible. It's going closer and closer to the water and the cogs disappear just as the toxin gets into the water. They realize it's going south toward the competition. They leave to go to the power chamber to find out if Billy has made a neutralizer yet. Then David sees the sludge incoming and Tommy's communicator goes off. Tommy hears about what's going on and David suggests that they morph, but there are way too many people around. David and Tommy go swimming out to get Kat and Rocky makes sure that the people stay out of the water. Kat is clearly confused as to what the hell is happening. In space, the Machine Empire celebrates that so far they're winning. Then Stone is watching the world's tiniest TV behind a painting, watching to find out that the water has toxins in it. Then Bulk and Skull are really struggling to make coffee. Then Bulk goes to drink the water, but then he stops just as he hears that the water is toxic and he almost passes out. David and Tommy get to Cat, and they see a big wave coming toward them, knocking Cat off of her board. Tommy and David are fine, but they can't find Cat anywhere. I mean, is she not strapped to the damn board? Just kidding, she's fine. Then they see the sludge and Kat asks what that is and David just says, that's what we've been trying to tell you. Like he's about to say, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Billy then finds Leaky Faucet on the viewing globe and Tanya and Adam both realize that they've definitely fought this dude before. Billy is going to work on an antidote while the others go, so Adam and Tanya back to action. Rocky meets up with Tommy, David, and Kat on the beach and Zordon tells them that if they defeat the Leaky Faucet monster, everything will just magically return to normal. Apparently. Whatever, David is now gone for no reason whatsoever. Cat basically says, forget him, he's fine, and it's morphin' time. The five rangers flip in, trying to hit Leaky Faucet, but he keeps turning into water, dodging every single one of their attacks. Then Clank is there, telling Leaky Faucet to activate the fountain, somehow, and he liquefies, disappearing. They realize that he's in the water pipes, I guess, and we see him going through the pipes. Adam and Tanya are now just controlling the flow of the pipes. How did they even get there? There's a really long scene where they're just trying to get him out, and Tommy releases the water, and he doesn't come out at all, but then he's just behind them. Okay, and he says they fall for it every time. Fall for what? What the hell just happened? He meets up with Cogs and luckily the Gold Ranger is there to help the Power Rangers take on all these baddies. This is a really cool fight with all the Rangers taking out their power weapons and it's shot super interestingly as they start to take out the Cogs one by one. Then the Leaky Faucet starts spraying them with water before he causes explosions to appear around them. Then they fire at him with their Zeo laser pistols, but that's not working either. Then Tommy randomly sees a pipe of Freon and they run away. Then all of a sudden, all the rangers are just repelling from damn rafters. Then as soon as he turns into liquid, they hit the pipe, freezing him, and then the gold ranger takes him out. Clank and Orbis are there too, and they make the leaky faucet grow giant. The rangers call their Zeozords the Red Battle Zord and Pyramidus. They then just immediately form the Zeo Ultra Zord. They immediately blow leaky faucet up into nothingness, just absolutely killing him. Bulk and Skull have finally completed their coffee and they give it to Stone and clearly Bulk and Skull are actually pretty worried about Stone drinking this. Then Skull drinks it and his ears steam for some reason. Then Stone drinks it and he says it's perfect. 
Okay. In Space Machine Empire talks about how they're going to do hideous things to the Power Rangers for making them fail so many times. Yeah, we'll see about that. At the beach, Rocky, Tommy, and Kat then meet up with David, who said he had something to take care of. Then they're made aware of the winner of the competition and the trophy, which ends up going to some guy from Stone Canyon. Not gonna lie, that was not expected at all. The end. This episode is really nonsensical and weird and strange and all those other adjectives that I'm coming up with. It's edited pretty badly from the Japanese footage, but for some reason, I love this episode simply because this was yet another one that I had on VHS as a kid that I watched over and over again. To me, it's quintessential Zio. Weird and off the wall things, but then there's moments of good writing and acting like here or there. Also, don't forget about that moral of the story that's just shoehorned in right at the end for everyone to try to understand. Like, remember kids, if you make coffee for your boss, you use toxic water or something. Overall, I'm getting really tired of the red herrings for the uh, Gold Ranger here. Like, we get it. No one knows who he is. Can we just reveal him already? This is getting kind of ridiculous. Maybe next time, but spoiler alert, nope. But until then, may the power protect you. Yeah.